how many of you game or play emulators on your mobile phone. Whether it's casual puzzle games or 3D games like Life is Strange that run on Unreal Engine 4, these days, most phones are powerful gaming devices. You can compare any modern phone to an Xbox 360 or PlayStation 3 and not give it another thought. Phones that play video games or have dedicated gaming hardware have not always had a good run, however. In the mid-2000s, Nokia was the world's leading phone manufacturer and their first foray into a dedicated gaming phone known as the N-Gage did not go well. Only selling 3 million units, it was plagued with many design flaws and many games were borderline unplayable thanks to poor frame rates and questionable controls. Nokia did not give up on the N-Gage. There was a market for portable gaming on a mobile phone and they quickly worked on a follow-up which was released one year later and then other companies such as Samsung came along and introduced similar products. Sony took notice of the N-Gage as well, and the mistakes that Nokia had made with their phone. They had plans to develop their own. In 2006, three years after the N-Gage launch, Sony filed a patent for a PlayStation phone, and then the following year, a Sony Ericsson executive announced that they were developing a phone for gaming that had the cross-media bar which was already available in the Sony PSP, PS3, and the Japanese PSX region hardware. In the years between 2006 and 2011, it seemed like the PlayStation phone idea was just rumors and talk with Sony pushing forward with the popular PlayStation Portable. And in 2009, when the compact PSP Go was released, the PlayStation phone concept was all but forgotten. But Sony has always been an innovative company releasing many different products, some very successful, others not so. And they've never been one to sit on an idea without at least testing the market. On April the 1st, 2011, Sony finally released their PlayStation phone, five years after the original patents were filed. This wasn't an April Fool's joke, the rumors turned out to be true. The PlayStation phone was rebranded as the Xperia Play as part of the Xperia line of smartphones and ran on Android Gingerbread 2.3. So, let's first address the elephant in the room. The Sony Xperia Play smartphone looks very similar in terms of design and button layouts to the Sony PSP Go that was released in 2009. But, is the Xperia Play just another device based on PSP hardware, or is it something else? Well, let's go ahead and take a closer look at the hardware of the Xperia Play and see what this device is and what it isn't. Released in 2011, the Sony Xperia Play is a dedicated Android device that runs on the Snapdragon S2 chipset. It features a 1 GHz CPU, an Adreno 205 GPU that has four dedicated pipelines and runs at 245 MHz clock speed. The Xperia Play has a 4-inch 854x480 TFT LCD screen. In comparison, the PSP Go has a 3.8 480x272 screen. Internally, it has a quite large 512 megabytes of internal RAM, which is good for multitasking apps, but on the flip side has very small internal storage, only 400 megabytes. Fortunately, a micro SD card slot is available for up to 32 gigabytes of additional storage. I've also heard with the custom ROM that this can be even larger. The display is a capacitive touchscreen that has a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. In the closed position, the Xperia Play has a typical smartphone look from 2011 with Android-style buttons. But what makes this device interesting is that it's designed to be a gaming phone, with the gentle push of the horizontal slide mechanism reveals the slide-out controls and buttons. Look familiar? When compared to the PSP Go, the layout is very similar. You get the left and right shoulder buttons, the D-pad, which has a better feel than the PSP Go's, select and start buttons, the four PlayStation buttons, and the two controls in the middle are for analog controls. One common misconception is about the compatibility of this device. Although it may look and feel like a PSP Go, it does not support PSP games at all, and it was never designed to do so. What it does support natively, however, is PlayStation 1 games. A unique feature of the phone is the application known as PlayStation Pocket. This application allows the user to purchase and download PlayStation games and play them on the device. Crash Bandicoot is a built-in free game that comes with the Xperia Play. But it's not actually installed on the phone, you must first download it by tapping the icon. But guess what? The download still works. For an obsolete phone from 2011, this is actually pretty good that you can still download and play it considering network services 8 years ago are not guaranteed to be up in 2019. Launching the game shows the familiar PlayStation startup screen and the emulation is excellent. The controls feel great and I prefer the D-pad over the PSP Go. 
you also have the option to adjust the screen size, controls and volume. You can even multitask out and come back to the game later. When you quit the game, you also have the option of saving your state. This is awesome if you wanted to multitask, take phone calls on the device and be able to jump back in later. Other than Crash Bandicoot that came pre-installed with the PlayStation Pocket app on the Sony Xperia Play, it is no longer possible to buy games and install them under the PlayStation Pocket app in 2019. But this wouldn't be an MVG video if I didn't tell you that there is a way via some hacking methods to get additional games on the PlayStation Pocket app. So let's go ahead and take a look and see how that's done. The application known as PS Xperia Tool that has been developed by Yifan Lu allows you to convert any PlayStation game to work on the Xperia Play with the PlayStation Pocket app. The application will take your game image and package it up with the Crash Bandicoot container files that are already on your phone. In order to do this, connect up your Xperia Play to your PC via USB, then you will need two files from your phone, this APK file and this ZPack file. The application clearly tells you where to locate both of them. These are the files from Crash Bandicoot. Now load them into the tool and click Extract. Once this step is complete, click on the Convert tab. Then provide the PlayStation image file that you want to convert. I'm going to use Spyro the Dragon. You can optionally give it a name, title and other information. You can also assign it an icon. The icon, however, must be a PNG and no larger than 170 by 170 pixels. Once you have everything in place, click on the Convert button. This will build the image or APK files for the new game. It will also take a few minutes, but once complete, you will have a folder called Output. Inside the Output folder, drag the contents of both of these files into the Xperia Play Drive under the Android folder. Once it's copied over, now on the Xperia Play phone, open up the icon called Application Installer. You will notice the Spyro the Dragon Game Installer. Now select and install it. You can launch it from here or you can go into the PlayStation Pocket app and it will appear in the list of games and a tap of the icon will launch the game. This method works with all PlayStation 1 games and most of them play perfectly. There is, however, some compatibility issues with some games. Tony Hawk 2, for example, has graphical glitches. Remember, although it's an official app from Sony, it's still emulation under Android, of course. I do want to mention the analog controls. They do take some getting used to. I tried them out with a few games and it felt a little weird to me. It's probably something that I won't ever use. The PSP Go small analog stick is a much better design, or maybe it's just me. Let me know if you've used the analog on the Xperia Play before. I'd like to hear your thoughts. But of course, this is an Android device, and that means established emulators. Although this device is from 2011, it's quite capable of running most 16 and 32-bit emulators with excellent performance. Nintendo 64 emulation runs far better than the PSP equivalent, and the Nintendo DS emulator Drastic plays very well. And of course, Genesis, Super Nintendo, and PC Engine are all excellent, making full use of the onboard controller. In my opinion, the Xperia Play is superior to the PSP Go, except in one area, PSP games. The Xperia Play does not support them. There is an emulator you can try, but it's slow and not worth the effort. But everything else just feels better. The screen is far superior and with excellent battery life on the Xperia Play and the ability to replace them easily makes it an interesting handheld and one to consider. Speaking of, I bought mine from AliExpress and it was pretty cheap. I'll leave a link in the description below if you were interested in picking one up. Although the Xperia lines of phones are still present to this day, Sony did not release any follow-up to the Xperia Play gaming device from 2011. It's a shame, as there was a lot of potential here, but still, I've had a ton of fun with the Xperia Play phone. It makes me wish that I owned one back in the day when they first came out. But even in 2019, there's still a lot of fun to be had here, and it's something that I'm happy to own as part of my collection.
So in conclusion, I really like the Sony Xperia Play smartphone and I think it's a really interesting piece of hardware. I really do wish that Sony had released updates to the Xperia Play line of smartphones, maybe incorporating PSP or PS Vita support in future enhancements or future upgrades of the smartphone. I think that would have been really awesome to see. But as we know, Sony hasn't always had a good track record when it comes to portable gaming and unfortunately with the PlayStation Vita ending its life cycle here in a few short months I do think that Sony really has no interest in reviving something like this for the modern era. Now before I go guys I do want to say that I'm so excited to be back in front of the camera in front of you guys. I had last week off I was on vacation but I'm back and we've got some really awesome content coming up and some things that I can't talk about quite yet that are going to be awesome. So stick around on the channel. There's going to be some really cool stuff coming up in 2019. Well, guys, I'm going to leave it here for this video. Thank you so much for watching and supporting me. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye for now.